Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the NLC, where we are getting ready for our final game of the day. The match of the day, not the match of the week, as some people may have informed you. We've got Veneer facing off against Riddle. Two Norwegian orgs, one the lower end of the table, one right at the very top. Veteran, what should we expect going into this game? I mean, ah, uh, to expect a solid showing from Riddle. What hmm. I want to see is more than a solid showing from Veneer because Veneer are a team that is so close to being a top team. Their score yep. really does not reflect where they are. Where Verdant's score, you could maybe subtract a little from when thinking about their method of winning games. With Veneer, I almost feel like you have to then add that same amount on because it's a team that should have closed against so many teams and that's their only issue. They know how to get into a position where the only question is when do we end, not how do we end or can they end or anything like that. Um, and yet they still manage not to get to that point, sometimes mm. against Verdant even in the, in the manner everybody knows. Um, I, uh, I want to see them be aggressive in the early phase against Riddle because Riddle, you know, yep. they, they are a Zeri, Lissandra, these kinds of champions team uh, with a bridge kind of jungler like Lee Sin, or well, Lee's much more of like a heavy ganking jungler or Vi or anything like this, these kinds of things to help them out in the early phase. Whereas Veneer are all aggression all the time. We can expect a Veneer lead. If hmm. we don't see a Veneer lead, then Riddle truly are monstrous or Veneer are trying something new, right? So it's all about Veneer here. They are the guys that can decide to flip the script. They are the guys that can play the same script but change the ending. Riddle, we kind of know what we're going to get, right? It's a very Riddle favoured matchup. Yeah, and I think to to complement the the strong play the Riddle have demonstrated as a team, they've also just been like strong individual players, like strong individual laners. And they're not a team that it's easy to get advantages against. They're also a team that doesn't feel like they overreach at any point. So I think Veneer, whilst we can, whilst we can expect that they may get an early lead, I think it's going to be very, very hard fought for them to get that. Yeah, I mean, it should be, but the champions that are normally picked by Riddle aren't really that kind of a champion. And we don't normally see Riddle win by heavy rolling early phase and then going into, you know, mid late game the way that Veneer do. Well, the question is just when do they win? They normally explode the game around these neutral objective contests, which Kiba's been very good at rotating to. Reptile apparently is just terrible at doing, according to Kiba. <laughs> um, that mid jungle normally have really good utility for on those contests and then mid game they normally like to have banderas on that top side kind of split push to set up a lot of these neutral contests so we know the kind of thing to expect from riddle but it isn't that kind of early dominance right when we look at dominant teams it's always good to remind yourselves how they win games because dominating score doesn't necessarily mean that they go in and are just mm. fisting from minute one to minute 20 where the nexus explodes right that's not always the case the case with g2 but it's not always the case um as we've seen frequently in the past many dominant teams that are in fact very slow teams where mm. it's almost like why, why are they even here in the first place it's boring to watch you know um and normally i like those teams because those are the teams that have had issues that they have to work around and that's why they have to play slow. So Rocks Tigers, for example, uh, is a team that you've heard me brought up many times every mm. cast because they are my favorite team of all time. Um, at least being removed by Riddle, you want to talk about Fast and Furious. That is the quintessential early game jungle of the current patch. Lingui insta-locking the Fiora really throws down the gauntlet against Banderas, a big Camille main. And look, the first things we're seeing rotated, Jace, Quinn, really hard counters to this. Kennen, not as hard a counter, but does have really good options into the Fiora, aggressive ones. Top lane could definitely be the place where we see things happen for both sides. Lulu, we know what they're going to pair this with right? The classic from Riddle. Right, well, we actually, wait, they can't because the Zeri has been removed by Veneer. I actually, I absolutely love that. Okay. So what, what does Reptile do in those circumstances? Sivir. He's, Sivir is 
of civet. Ford, and it would be on theme with the civ with, with the civet with the zeri the jacks mm -hmm. is going to be rotating to the field with though um very strong champions in top side this could be a bot to top game depending on what is picked bot and this definitely makes it more likely that it's severe being locked in for reptile but there's a part of me that wants to see him go into the caitlin right or something aggressive, right? Oh. Valis is also up as well. You know, something that you could win lane with. But, you know, if he wants to go scaling, fine. I'm down for it. When I think Reptile, I actually think Jinx and Zaya are the first two things that come to mind. Uh, Kaiser, very aggressive uh, draft coming out from Veneer, but this is more hmm. of a level six thing. We're used to seeing Lucian Nami come out at this point from Veneer, or even Chrisberg's infamous Caitlyn picks. Um, Kaiser, though, I wonder what they're going to pair it with in support, because I guess Nautilus into Enchanter early. Zaya again, the champion I yeah. always think about when it comes to Reptile. Um, and could be even better here, because you're basically playing against full engage. The feathers give you a zone of control. Very interesting developments, actually, from just a Zeri ban. I, is this really just going to be a Nautilus for Veneer, and they flip it level one? I I, I don't know where this is going to go, Middle Cut. I don't know. I... <sighs> I, I, that's that's a reasonable possibility, right? Because it's kind of similar to what we saw last game. You yep. try and stack as, as many CC tools with a <laughs> Kaiser as possible and, and, and just all in on one. someone. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> They're not going to let that happen. As Nautilus has been removed for the tail. Wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if another aggressive support is taken off the board. And Johans Kindred actually did play that last time out uh, versus Nord in their win. And Veneer paying rightfully respect to the pick. Yeah, I mean, with Lulu, it would be a really strong pairing to launch Kindred with it. You might just see another kind of carry jungler removed. I'm also wondering, is this a Kaiser in the mid lane? Um, could not, couldn't necessarily not be in the bot lane there. I'm also wondering if there are picks, I think, in support that go well with this in the recent ADC support meta. So then I'm thinking about valus for example support with the kaiser right mm. um with your ultimate you can still engage something that she can go in on and you have a lot of control level one with hell of blades right things like this are possibly an option for veneer otherwise they're changing their identity viego classic bridge jungler right for mm. johan but i i want to see what identity we see from veneer this game uh, the Azir for Luca is a new one. Uh, first time he's going to be playing that this split, and I think operates at a range a bit further away than I tend to associate with this guy. As Amuma's going to be locked in for touch in the bottom laner, support pick, which is absolutely horrible to deal with, especially at the level one. So it's yep. not quite the strength of the Nautilus, but you got something very, very similar alongside that Kaiser. I mean, I feel like it's not as guaranteed as the Nautilus because Nautilus's ultimate obviously is point and click. Um, but I do think level yep. one, it's actually even better. Um, so I'm more down for this. And also the additional magic pen is going to be good for both the Azir and the Kaiser. And I was talking about this big thing when I think about Riddle is the utility that comes out of their mid jungle. And you have the Lissandra coming in again. And this also makes it extremely difficult for the Kaiser to get off what she wants to get off later on. The Vi dive, the Amumu dive into the Kaiser. There's a really obvious tool now in the kit of Riddle that they have pulled out before to counter that. As well as, you know, the Zion and the Lulu. They are really good anti-dive champs as well. And you basically have a full dive comp from Veneer. Let's see how this goes. I expect a very active level 1 on bot side early um, because that's just a veneer identity, right? Heavy early game. Mm. Um, and top side, I would also expect a similar thing, though Jack's E level one makes it kind of difficult. Um, gods, man, this this isn't the typical veneer, right? This isn't, mm. this isn't what I typically expect from them. And I do feel like Riddle have all the options to counter the ways that veneer would win fights post 20 minutes, where you have to fight over that Baron. So this is riddle favored in 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 my opinion right this is this is heavily riddle favored um i think we obviously fought that before draft but i'm interested i'm, da I'm down mm. to see how this goes they have to keep riddle split if they want to close this game out so it's a very difficult thing to do and i say this every time we watch veneer because it almost always comes down to the same thing <laughs> Let's see if they can do it this time. Yeah. You know, surely eventually it works. <laughs> but, 
Yeah, no. Is this the one where you've all bet on Riddle? If we've all bet on Riddle, I, I think I think win. we I think we have all bet on Riddle. I okay, think in that, that case, Veneer are allowed to win because we all lose. It. We're all good. <laughs> Wait, this is about your predictions again. Oh my, veteran. Look, I'm on the back foot, all right? I missed that day, so I got RNG'd. I have to catch up, all right? You need to understand the grind, all right? Chat understands the grind here, all right? Is this updated with the with the domino one? So I, I don't think this is I don't think this is from today. So no, this is uh, I, I production think that's has confirmed. The production production knows what they're looking at. Yeah. As it was at the start of the day. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so don't cool. worry about. There is League of Legends match of the day, by the way, coming up on your screen. Fire rain. Stood in the bush. Banderas also stood in the bush. Now, wait, this is the longest just my stood in the bush. Stream? Okay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you saw Veneer. A load of recalls coming through from that bottom lane. Uh, ultimately, not met by Riddle there, who instead opted for nice defensive fan and denying some of that level one possibilities that we said Veneer kind of wanted to rely on a little. Yeah, but look at the ward placement here. All right, so very interesting. You can, anybody watching, do this in your solo queue games as well, translate this into anything, but your ward placement level one in those bot brushes depends on how you think the lane is going to go. If you think you're going to win the early levels of... Um, of, of the game, then you're going to ward more towards that mid or the enemy. Otherwise, if you think you're going to lose out, you're going to ward behind before you switch to Sweeper. Why are you going to do this? Because you're expecting a Mumu to be in that bot back brush towards Lulu and Zaya. So given mm. this, they are saying, Lulu and Zaya are saying, we don't expect to win out level one. We actually expect Chrisberg to be very, very aggressive with touch and actually get wave control early. And that's why the wards are placed where they're placed there. So you can see a lot about how either side views the matchup. Now they get stuff from, Ooh. well, you're supposed to react, but they get vision on the Amumu from that. They don't dodge it though. And it's turning into a 2v2. But Chris Berg is actually losing out on this. That is that is really rough, and I, I guess yep. just not quite ticking over to, to level two there, or just the, the trade just not working out, unfortunately. Veneer and Spotlane still have priority over the wave, and Reptile will be forced to play a little bit defensively. No flash, no cleanse on the Zaya, so a potential target until level six. Yeah, the good thing about having the wave advantage at level one that they did is that Lulu and Zaya ultimately can't just chase them through the massive amount of minions and take essentially another spell's worth of damage. But yeah, you're right, they, they didn't get the level two, they would have had the level two, they were solo lane, but they're a duo lane. Now though, they can be safe. They can back up on this wave because they crashed at level two, but it looks like they're, they're, no, now they've just pushed in. They're very, very vulnerable. Ooh, touch with the bandage toss to Spider-Man to Johan, but Chris Berg, yeah, I wouldn't burn a summon a spell there. First blood for Johan and hey, Riddle playing towards bottom lane. Yep. I mean, three camps on top side was he was transitioning into bot side is when all the plays happened. Really easy call there, right? You see that Veneer are playing aggressive to the wave as you're moving bot side and you realize, okay, we transition to a bot side play. This is the exact kind of reactive play that you want to be doing as a jungler, even in your solo queue games, right? So he wasn't planning from level one onwards to free camp into bot clear that into bot gank i mean that just happened because he saw the way that vanilla was playing and he reacted accordingly very good stuff so far from riddle they had a good read on how the lane was going to go early and they had a good reaction to how veneer ended up choosing to play it out veneer on the other hand though they didn't really think as far ahead as riddle were they've been caught out and and I think it's it's such an interesting play to look at because coming into the split, one of the questions that we had about Riddle was, okay, they've got this Korean mid-jungle duo. How are they going to communicate with the team? How are they going to integrate with the team? And then after like the first interview, we found out, oh, actually, Johan and Fire Angel speak really good English. And you can see the different components of this Riddle roster coordinating to make that gank possible and to make it work. I would, I, I would also argue in that instance, even if there was a language barrier, any decent bridge or ganking jungler should know just from looking at that bot lane that you skip camps and you gank here every single time. And I think that definitely should be praised, that Johan understands this aspect and reacts to that immediately, changes his direction immediately, especially in the current meta, that kind of selfless jungling will go a long way. CRISPR gets a crash in, there's no way that they can win 2v2 here, even though you know they have an 
advantage of sorts. Um, that kill did go over to Johan. I'm fine with that, by the way. Just want to yeah. be completely clear. I think it's good the kill went over to Johan. Um, you want to think about it. The most important spike on the map right now is Viego's first Ooh. item spike. That will transfer to every lane. Right now, that's transferring to Proxy Ooh, hello, and transferring hello. to mid. Proxy is going to flash towards the top side and... That will actually get him away there. Very, very smart usage of the summoner spell and Fire and Johan not quite able to catch out the Vi. Yeah, nope, but right there you see the advantage that going back and getting a longsword and a sheen was able to do. That additional mm. amount of AD on top of the sheen allows him to win any of these trades, force Ploxy out the jungle and start setting up for the other lanes. It's really good if your jungle is able to get early kills because those first spikes get transferred to the entire map. So good for them. Zaya and Lulu will be useful no matter what. It's a good leveraging. Banderas here. You know, the, the new Jax is a phenomenal champion, by the way. I mean, I don't know if phenomenal... <laughs> so if you're against him, you probably don't agree with me on this. But the new Jax is a phenomenal <laughs> champion. Well, I, ph phenomenal has many meanings and connotations, <laughs> right? Um, I think there's good phenomenal and there's bad phenomenal. I think all it means is very, very... Something, right? I mean, if I'm top lane, I ban him every game. But, like, the, oh, the, yeah, the new things you can do with EWQ, the things you can do with new Zonias and... The, well, not new Zonias, but the things you can do with Zonias in the build now and all this, like, I, thi I think it's just a ridiculously brutal champion. Um, thus far, hasn't actually been played to. Why right? all of the action has been bot side. Seems to be fairly consistent. I don't know what the NLC players are doing, or the NLC top laners, but apparently they've made the rest of their team very mad every game. Um, and here I'm not entirely sure what ignoring this lane goes in favor of, right? Does it go in favor? Well, I mean, in this situation, it will go in favor of the Jax because Lingui, mate, you have no HP. Yeah, definitely not a lot. And Banderas will solo kill him. That's going to feel very, very good, especially in a matchup like Fiora Jax, which can be so swingy. See, right here, that's all transformed into your solo queue game, guys. If you're half HP, don't walk up to the wave if you don't know where Jax is. You're just gonna die. Like, you're just gonna die. I've no, no idea no, what the no, plan no, was no. there. <laughs> Lingui thought Baderas had gone, but he was, uh, he went, surprise, I'm back. I mean, in those situations where Jax is off the map, he could be recalled or he could just solo you if he stays <sighs> there. I think your best bet is to not touch the wave recall and just TP back and accept the L. The best thing you actually want is for your jungler to help you out in that situation, escort the wave out. But, you know, as we've said, no NLC team likes their top laner, except for maybe Nord. Big fans of WoW, uh, from what I've heard. Yeah. Game is definitely taking a little bit of time to get going. It's Riddle that have found the Lion's share of the early kills. They found the Lion's share of the early pressure as well. And Johan is going to be finding the enemy top later in his own jungle. And Linkui does have a fair bit of chase down potential on the Fiora. Not enough to really threaten a kill onto Johan, but with Ploxy there to back him up, feels free to make aggressive moves in the enemy jungle. And now, go over and take the Herald. So this is an interesting invade solely because we don't see that so much. But what do we say about Riddle, right? Riddle like to blow open these games at these contests where they can leverage their massive amounts of utility and Fire Rain is looking for an in. Mm -hmm. You see Reptile and Kiba also moving through the mid lane and uh, the committal of Riddle members towards the top side of the map is enough to force away Ploxy from the Herald. Intrigue the Riddle up not to start up the objective themselves, instead just content to force Veneer away. Yeah, but, you know, if Veneer had decided to commit, Riddle were in a very good position again. A lot of the time, as always, due to Fire Rain, Veneer looks like they don't want to give up the Herald, though. They love their Ooh, only advantage. Oh, that's a flash Ooh. engage onto touch! And the Amumu can't contribute any of his CC to that fight. The knock up onto Johan as he goes over the Emperor's Divide, but Luca can slide and glide himself out of that riddle, getting a kill. They should be able to pick Harold up as well. Yeah, but I mean, it's just very difficult to contest early neutral objectives against Riddle's composition, and I feel like that can be said of most games. Sure, their ADC is not normally in a super strong position in these opening phases, but Fire Rain always brings out something that is super useful in those contests, and again, just the pressure of that Lissandra 
on the flank, forced Veneer away, gave Riddle control, and Veneer, they couldn't just say no because they don't really know what to do if they don't have an early lead, though arguably they don't mm. know what to do if they have an early lead. So they go for it anyway, and they get summarily punished. Um, yeah. that That's the thing that is worrying me. I'm seeing Veneer 10 minutes in yeah. with a, a 2k gold deficit. Um, yeah. And whilst the scaling options here, the Veneer that we've seen in weeks yeah. past... This is not a good sign. No, and you know what? Like, you want to go back to our analysis of the whole thing. We think about Riddle in terms of their contests around neutral objectives and how they, well they execute on that, those kinds of rotations and those kinds of team fights. We think about Veneer. That's also where they lose the game, right? There's mm. always a Baron contest or a late soul contest that they don't play properly. And in those scenarios is where they end up losing control that they had thus far. Here, Riddle are punishing for them for that, right? They've identified it early on, and if they continue to identify it later, then it's not really good to see. It's not really a good situation for Veneer. Yeah, and and it, it can become harder to sort of look for angles that they can play themselves out of it. I'm intrigued to see what Boxy uh, is going to do. Recently hit level 7 on the Vine, has had access to the Ultimate 4. A little bit. I want to see him get into a lane. I want to see him punch someone in the face. That's what this champion wants to do. But if I does that, then Johan, who has two kills, who has gotten Divine Sunderer, will also be there. Now, even mm. if you have a small item advantage on the Fiora, on the Kaiser, on the Azir, not saying they do, but even if you did, and Johan's there on the Viego, a champion that spikes really heavily on first items, as any good jungler does, you'll lose out on the 2v2. So Vi has to identify where Johan is, play away from Johan, and only then can she find the winning play, which severely restricts them. Touch with an engage in the bot lane. Feathers flying from Reptile, but very well-timed bandage toss. Locked him down, but ultimately Veneer aren't able to find the kill, and Johan isn't no. able to find anything else just yet. Charging up the stun into the double knockup onto Chris Berg and Touch, but Riddle, not really finding damage access yet. Boxy, Vault Breakering away. Luca also roaming down. Fire Rain is joining the party as well. Riddle, are they going to look for a dive? No, just back away. Turn towards the Drake. Yep, and right there again, Vi didn't identify where Johan was. or she did, thought they could make a faster play than they could. And Johan's very presence forced off the rest of the team. With the Lulu there, Boxy. very difficult to do anything. So to plant over means she does not have to burn flash to get out, but Luca's caught. Yeah, caught out by Fire Rain, who invested the ultimate and the Ring of Frost. But the Emperor Shreema cannot run himself away. Bandera's just doing a little bit of counter jungling, just because he can. He really hasn't had too much to worry about this game, as Harold summoned in the mid lane from Johan. He's just about going to get that charge onto the tower, donate some gold over to himself and Fire Rain. I need to start a campaign. Like, top laners are people too, guys. Right? Like, you can play to them. You know, you can do things with them. You know, like, there's a Fiora and a Jax, and I've barely seen them in my game. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, there, there, there's a point at which it's too many games in a row <laughs> where the carry tops are just. Uh, are we I implying the existence of some sort of conspiracy, veteran? No. No, 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 no. It's more like some form of discrimination, right? They just don't like any top laner, you know? I like you, Banderas. I like you, Lingui. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate them too. I, I appreciate both. I gave Banderas an MVP at one point, you know? I have, I have, I have, I have top lane friends, you know? Like, I'm cool with top <laughs> laners, you know? All right, and Darius here. He's got his divine solar right now, so mid and uh, top lane and jungle with I don't that have top spike. Lane <laughs> oh, all right. Anyway, looking across the map, it's not looking great for Veneer at the moment. Only a minor lead for Riddle, and despite all of the attention towards the bot lane, Chrisberg has still got a pretty damn good CS lead on Reptile. I mean, he does, but in terms of gold, I mean, you're looking at, like, a wave, if you want to go to the analogy I'm talking about before, and Zaya is going to be useful to the composition, crucially, irrespective 
of that kind of gold advantage, right? Or any kind, really. Um, I still like that the gold advantage is on Johan because it's so much utility on the mid and on the bot lane that if they can just enable the Viego in a team fight and play hmm. to get Viego that first reset, he'll be able to carry the fights accordingly. This includes the Jax, right? Like, I'm not yeah. so bothered. Like, honestly, I'm not that bothered that the Jax has been left alone and they're not hard accelerating on him. Because Veneer will contest all these neutrals, and you will win them with this Viego setup. I also just want to, like, I really want to focus on this. I feel like, oh, Oh, uh, Bloxy's dead. Uh, Johan with another kill for himself. Fire Rain going to get Luca low, but Johan is able to get over the wall just in time. Luca can dash back there with the Shifting Sands and get away. That's a couple of times that Riddle have looked at the Veneer mid lane. They haven't been able to take him out just yet, but... Yeah, another kill Don't on worry. Johan. This Viego is really starting to snowball. I mean, that was really good for what I wanted to emphasize, which is that I feel like Riddle is the only team that has honestly recognized, and this includes, like, Ruddy, and Ruddy think they're a smart team, right? But I feel like <laughs> this is the only team that understands what you want from mid lane. And what you want from your mid lane right now is mm -hmm. not just utility, but utility that can be transferred to the sides. And these guys are the only guys that are picking Lissandra, a champion that is buffed because Roa was changed into a quite frankly mm -hmm. disgusting item and then coded into the game for no apparent reason. Um, and side laners like the Kaiser Desire in this game, sure, but the Zeri from before, Caitlyn's Lucians yeah. that you've seen, demand to be played around. Or you have stuff like Jax Fiora, which demand to be played around. You want to be playing a midsection that can get priority, transfer it elsewhere, and has utility with it. Look at the state of jungle. You either have bridge yeah. champions that do too much damage, like Viego, or you have carry junglers like Kindred and stuff that you guys are banning. Udir, champions like this. Lilia is, has come back in the LEC because Yike has a brain. And Riddle have that brain here too, right? Their mid jungle is, is, is playing the things I think logically you should be wanting to do. Because yes, the game is about sides now. And this has paid dividends for them for so long. It's why they're 7-0. They're 7-0 because mm. they're the team that's figured out midsection. All the lower tier teams don't even play at their midsection, but Riddle play of their midsection and understand logically what you should be picking, given that that's you want, what you want to be doing, right? Yeah, and, and until given, other teams catch up, they're going to dominate. And, and, and given that they are like a team that is able to play that so well, it, it reflects really interesting a lot of the gold. As hold on, Luca potentially caught the crown of the Shad Cream. Means he's not taking too much damage. Johan does get the stun with the Spectrum all chained into the Glacial Prison. That is a whole heap of damage and a rampage kill for Johan. Touch and Lingui on the Reset. wrong side of the fight as Banderas and Johan are hunting them down. They're able to dash away, but with the Leap Strike, Banderas follows over the wall. The Counter Strike won't secure a stun as it's just a single kill or riddle in that engage veneer. We're able to sneak away that dragon. They pay for it with a little bit of blood. <laughs> Meanwhile, though, just getting a Herald charge on mid lane in here, Tower, at 18 minutes. I had a pre-level 30 game that looked like this. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's true. We were about to hit a minute 30 until Baron and Veneer have no lead. This is the worst case scenario for them. The darkest timeline, potentially. Banderas oh. can dash himself away. Luca going forward. No ultimate no. for the Azir, and yet nothing for the pressure applied in the bottom lane. Yeah, they might get a tower off of this, but a couple of resets, and they're just going to go straight for topside. Viego doesn't feel the need to reset. Nobody is up there. Look at the vision coverage on topside here, by the way. Viego mm. knows that he can go straight for this tower. He has Sheen procs. He can delete that tower. So the rest are going to be on the map. In a sec, they're going to defend bot side, but they're then going to be able to play through mid to top, and they're going to be well ahead of Veneer on those because they'll have this added priority from this wave pushing on top side. And mid tower is not down, right? Look how much easier it is to play when the mid tower is not down and you have stuff like Jax or even a Viego, which this game has become a split pusher. Because honestly, mate, when you're 4 0, 19 minutes into the game, and you have this kind of an item advantage, you can do whatever you want. You're, you're whatever champion you choose yeah. to be, okay? <laughs> With Viego, that's actually very little.
Well, I, I mean, Viego is literally any champion yep. he chooses to be. <laughs> he but can this choose game has to be Kaiser. <laughs> Well, I, I wouldn't necessarily choose to be Kaiser right now because Chris Berg, <laughs> once he has to be got anyone that, on Bernier right that now. Early, yeah, you, you, you're just in, in a not great spot. And fundamentally, you're against uh, a singular champion almost that can just destroy your entire team. Two items for Johan has now got that black cleaver, so even harder to stand against him. And even building resistances is almost going to be completely useless. Riddle, though, they're, they're just keeping to their game plan. They're keeping to the same style that we always see from them. Very controlled, very methodical, and denying Veneer a lot of the opportunities to look in. Yep, 100%. I mean, Veneer, <laughs> they can clear out this vision, but they can only clear the shallow vision. This lets them back into their own jungle, maybe. But they'll have to fight it, and I don't think they win these. Nope, Touch is already... 5 HP, he's already Reset. dead. Another one for Johan. Ploxy and Chrisberg force back as well. That jungle no longer belongs to you. It belongs oh, to Johan man. as he gets a double kill. A third is taken for Reptile. Riddle, 8 and 0, moving towards the Baron. If it wasn't a 0, we would be saying this doesn't this doesn't score-wise look like a complete stomp, right? Like like mm. a complete excel like a, a killer minute game that we have seen in the NLC before. Because Riddle do play comparatively slow, but they have been in control from basically the opening skirmishes on bot lane, right? This is a completely dominant effort by them. It will eventually be reflected in the score. It just doesn't look like they go for a killer minute, and they don't because they don't have to. They know they don't have to. They just know Veneer can't do anything. And they know now that the game is essentially won. 21 minute Baron there. Lingui wants to find something. Yeah, and Banderas doesn't have any support for a little while. Grand challenge is used. Lingui low on mana. Dunn is going to be oh. avoided as Banderas jumps straight into the waiting arms well. of Poxy. And Touch will get the kill. I feel like if Fiora got the kill there, that would feel more impactful but as is i mean it's a reset maybe we can get tier two boots off this but i am they're gonna need a lot more than that if they want to get back in yeah. i will say though removing the split pushing jax's baron that can matter right that can mm. actually matter if they want to set up a 4-1 with jax on sides jax can't escort out a Baron wave on his own, so maybe you have to send the Viego for that instead, right? Maybe the Jax has to group or something like that. Or you can't do the 4 1 at all and you go into like an old school Fnatic 0 3 2 comp. Yeah, and the, the thing is, for Riddle though, the lack of that Baron buff on Banderas to help with the push, I feel like that's something that they can recognize and adapt to, right? Because this is an mm. intelligent team that understands how to adapt. We saw it in that early gank from Johan, skipping his bottom side camps when he knew that there was an opportunity on the bottom half of the map. And Riddle there, using the members of their team that do have the Baron to get the push, whilst Banderas goes back to defend the towers. Yeah, I mean, this is just good play, to be honest. <laughs> like, yeah. it's just good League <laughs> of Legends. Which is satisfying to see after uh, some of the games that we've been watching today. Though not to, not definitely not to disparage the entertainment value of such games, but I do like seeing the kind of reactions that Riddle have had to changing map states this game. It's very interesting, and it does, it does illustrate for me when I contrast it with the rest why they are in the lead. Uh, Banderas. Well, second second time that's happened, buddy. Maybe this uh, is maybe relax a little not bit. Not a Banderas MVP game. I'll say that. <laughs> I, I think it might be a Johan MVP game, if I'm being might honest, be. veteran. I'm going to be real. Like, I'm so tempted to just give it to the Lissandre. <laughs> I'm not joking. But, uh, I, but why, why would you do that? Why would you do that, veteran? Well, because the Lissandre's uh, movements around the Heralds and the Neutrals and the early fights forced Veneer to be unable to do anything on the map. That was actually really big by, by the way that Lissandre's being active on all these. It hasn't turned into anything, but that's because Veneer just run away in fear every time. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily understate it, and I do think the fact that Fire Rain is consistently willing to pick a champion that basically neutralizes every mid lane pick and is able to exert such pressure around the map enables the rest mm. of his team. So I am tempted yeah. to give it to him. 
Um, not to say that Johan hasn't had any impact in the game or something. Just I do look at the game and think Firewind's had a huge impact too. And, and it's so I I intriguing to contrast a player like Fire Rain with someone like Eminence, who was playing in the NLC last year, right? Eminence, Korean import. It was all about the solo kill. This guy was all about aggression and making plays on his own that would 90% of the time work out because he was very, very good. Maybe closer to like 70, 80%, whatever. But Fire Rain employing a very different style. He's much more team oriented. He much more cares about getting advantages for the other players on his team, but he's still just as effective. Johan diving on to touch and Ploxy trying to respond back onto the Viega, but the movement a little bit too slick, getting away from that Vault Breaker. I mean, this will trigger some people, but I think Fire Rain's a much better player. And um, I, I don't see any relation between him and MNS at all, except solely for the fact that they are Korean. Um, and I mean, yeah, that's what we're sort of saying. It's a completely different playstyle and way of being good that they employ. Sh sure, yeah. I, 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 I don't, I, I don't like to group all the Koreans together in this regard. <laughs> partly because to me, it's like, I when I think about Fire Rain, I think of, for example, early Diplex, right? Um, yep. Who, oddly enough, is actually opposite MNS now on Cloud9, so there's still a link there. <laughs> um, but uh, he he was a very heavy utility player who didn't necessarily try to trade on every single wave and try to out-mechanic everyone. Um, but he mm. was always there on the map when needed, even at a very, very young age. Because um, I remember he started playing when he was 16. He technically wasn't old enough to even be in the LEC or anything like that for a few more years. Um, but he'd pick, like, Cled, Cho'Gaf, these kinds of champs, and just Predator Zoom to side lanes or to neutral objectives and basically be his teams engage and everything. And Fire Rain kind of reminds me of those early days there. Um, and he's been very useful thus far with that. Obviously, Viego's stealing the show, and the way that Viego responded to early plays was really, really strong. Um, but I do think there's something to be said for having that kind of presence. Either way, the mid jungle is 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 the MVP this game. Right? They're, they're good. They're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the mid jungle is is the whole show, and it's a really I love that it is because it just brings the whole theme together. You know, of, mm. of the day, which has been like gradually we've seen teams try to incorporate mid jungle more and more, and then Riddle just shows everyone how it's done. And it, it's really hard, honestly, to look at many teams in the NLC properly challenging them. Obviously, Nord are, are there at the top of the table alongside them, but aside from them on a good day, there are very few teams that I would say have a decent chance against Riddle. I mean, we were talking about. Maybe the playstyle difference that Veneer could have incorporated into this game would give them an edge somewhere. That's emphatically not been the case. Yeah, I mean, they, they just weren't ever able to get it off. And honestly, thinking about it, like, why would anyone think that they could when the big thing that Riddle have always done is make it impossible to contest them on any of these neutrals? And that has been how Veneer's accelerated. Yes, they get priority in lane, they get pushing Ooh. lanes, but... Fire Rain well, diving in with that Glacial Prison as Poxy jumping onto Reptile, who's already killed the Vi! First kill, the engage going to Riddle, second kill going to them as well as Reptile goes into the sky just in time. That's three kills as in the river. Luca tries to save the game, he isn't able to do it. And Lingui will be run down by Riddle. Viora has a fair bit of mobility, but she's not going to escape a Baron and an Ace for Riddle. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, how do you do anything here? You have a full dive composition going into Lissandra, going into Lulu, going into Zaya, going into Jax. All champions that have very easy disengage tools against you. This was always going to be a series of team fights that would be against Veneer. So at that point, how do you leverage your priority? into neutral objectives if Riddle are just willing to fight you on all of them. That's the that's the the gambit that Riddle gave them early on in the game. And at this mm. point they're just so far ahead. These fights, I mean, they're they're basically healing them when they touch them. It's it's been a little bit difficult to watch. Riddle as well as the Baron they've got to himself. They've stats up a few Drakes too. They got Mountain, a couple of Infernals, those bonus stats are making these fights even harder for Veneer to fight into. And with the goal lead at 11k, it's uh, it's just a matter of time, it feels like. Riddle do tend to take their time to close out their games, but 
It never feels like they're wasting time. It always feels like they're just waiting for an opportunity for a opponent to overextend, make a mistake, which they can then punish. I do honestly wonder, though, if you're just going to put Kiba on Lulu all the time, it's going to be so rare that we give him an MVP. Because he's not going to be able to have the amount of activity we... on the map, you know? Didn't we, we, didn't we give him the last MVP? We gave him one, yes. We, but gave, like, we I, gave him I, an I'm MVP. I'm thinking he's played these games really well. Like, he's mm. played these games really well, but I cannot say that he's had the set, the same level of importance that Firewain and Johan have had this game. It's but he also just doesn't have the chance to, you know? Yeah, it's it, the unfortunate reality of being <laughs> on a good team with good players is that it, it's a lot harder for you to lock down the MVP solely for yourself. It's also the reality of your Lulu and your mid laners locking in full engage champs. Like, they're just, you're, just, you're just not going to look as useful, you know? By Rain has opted for a little bit of damage in his build here with that Medge. He's currently sat on 10 stacks. So we want to fill out that book by the end of the game. And Riddle, they are now taking their time. But just seeing no one here from Veneer in the mid lane that can really defend. They can move in, get the inhibitor as I believe. Yep, Fire Rain is dead, but that's going to cost Veneer a load of time. Their mid lane inhibitor, their bot lane inhib tower. But not anything more. Yeah, I mean, they can make a play like that, but does that play really get them anything? Sure. The Sandra's down. You don't necessarily lose Baron buffs off of it, though. And you're not going to get anything on the map for it. Everything's already been cleared. You just lose bot tower. The, the, the ways that Veneer get back into the game haven't revealed themselves yet. And plays like that just help them lose a little bit slower. Or mm. lose with a little bit more grace is probably more accurate rather than mark the opening stages of a comeback. Realistically, them all being there just guarantees that their base is broken. Yeah. And uh, in a couple of minutes, Riddle are going to find access to one of the tools, possibly two, that is going to end this game. Baron spawning and an Infernal Soul spawning around the 34-minute mark. So intriguing to see which one of those they choose to pressure towards, although... I think in reality, it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, I mean, I guess they're trying to make their 50th play onto Banderas. It's worked out for them so far. And in this position, in this Potentially, position, just yeah, chain I mean, the CC, keep doing it. No, Banderas could get away. That was three people doing everything to try and take down the riddle top later. But he's a little bit more tankier than he was in the past. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Look at the mid wave though. This is the this is an issue with having inhibitor down on mid. Um, I I typically don't care about having inhibitor down mid, but it allows them to group up with the Lissandra pushing up the top wave way faster than they otherwise would be able to because the mid lane is so self pushing. What you'd ideally mm -hmm. prefer would be to have a flanking champion there, and that should be the Lissandra, but Riddle don't appear to have figured that out yet. Mm. I, I'm intrigued that they are playing this this so far back, right? They're not going for dies with the Lissandra or the Viego into the base mm. of the near. They're yeah. content to just sort of sit back and wait. I mean, the best thing to do in this particular kind of setup with Inhibitor down in mid is you have the Lissandra on mid section and you put the Zaya Lulu on top side or on bot side, depending on what you want to siege. And then the Lissandra moving with the mid wave can get a flank. Right? And you want to open that sort of thing. Putting Jax here could get something similar, but we basically want your flanking wave on your midsection here. That's how you try to close out. Gnar was a very common one that we used to use a lot for this, right? Urgot, stuff mm. like this. In this composition, your Jax is a kind of split pusher, so you're looking at a 1 3 1 or a 1 1 3 setup, and Lissandra is most likely to be your flanker. One could argue Viego, but I don't think you want to risk them making a play on Viego. So I think you have Viego with your grouping. But they're and, not doing uh, it, and so the game is stalling, when it really yeah. shouldn't be, because they have loads of advantages. But eventually, Vanilla yeah. is going to have to engage for the Infernal, because they just have that oh, in their brain. Oh, Fire Rain can jumps onto Chrisberg, immediately goes into his own Zonia's as touch. is the first kill of the fight left alone on the front line. Fire Rain oh! is dead, though, as Banaras is diving into the front of the fight, and Veneer are running backwards the entire damn time. But there is no escape from Riddle. 
Johan will drop down into the Guardian Angel as Linkwe is looking for his own Guardian Angel. Chris Berg is dead. Johan is legendary. And there is nothing that Veneer can do to stop Riddle from claiming their eighth win of the split. There was nothing Veneer could do at any point in the game, and yet the game took 35 minutes for Riddle to close when they were essentially about to perfect game their opponents 20 minutes in. This does expose something sure riddle have figured out mid jungle and they have this advantage mm. but if other teams look at riddle figure out what they're doing well incorporate it into their own gameplay as we're starting to see teams like dominoes do there are vulnerabilities there for riddle it shouldn't take that long to close out the game their lane setups are not very strong they seem to only have one way to close which is bait neutral fights so maybe don't give them all the utility in the game and give yourselves none whatsoever and then force around those same neutrals anyway might be a might be a tip you know yeah. there are avenues there but ultimately riddle showing why they're at the top they've got a very specific way of playing mm. and until you can counter that specific way of playing I think it's very, very hard to see any team in the NLC taking them down just yet. Veteran, in that game, strong performance from Riddle. And we had a little bit of a discussion on the cast. Have you come to a conclusion on who is your MVP for our match of the day? Yeah, I mean, I think I'll give it to Johan. Um, and again, I think it was good that, that he was getting those early kills. A lot of people mm. might think in those situations, no. But in this situation, God, yes. If I have this much utility <laughs> on my laners, I want my jungler monster fed. I want him to transfer that to as many lanes as possible. Make any grouping impossible. So yeah, I'd have to give it to Johan. All right. Well, thank you very much, veteran. I believe now we are going to be jumping straight into our losers interview, and that's going to be with Flash from Veneer. Obviously, going up against Riddle, it's going to be a tough way to start your second round, Robin. How, how do you feel like the guys played today? Uh, they, they played really well. They're the, the the team that is at the top uh, of the table right uh, right now. We we tried uh, something with the draft uh, with the first pick fair. It didn't work out, so we'll see how uh, the other games will go. Excellent. And looking, I guess, towards the second round, Robin. Um, I, I feel like our impression of Veneer has been a team that has had these very very strong early games, but has had a, a, a couple of issues once we start to get later on in in closing out these games looking forward to your to your remaining games i guess how do we feel like um that's going in terms of veneer's trajectory and how do you feel like looking forward uh, to those next games um like uh First of all, it's a little bit harder compared to the other teams because half of our team is not full time, so people are working, people are studying. Uh, so we also don't have that much of the screen time as other teams do, right? Um, so uh, even though we are doing a slow progress, uh, in the end, uh, you could see that the, the little things, like for example yesterday, are what matters and we could probably scream, uh, fix it if we would scream more, right? But uh, but we have to, to, to work on what we have and I think uh, um, we will be trying to, to win all the remaining games. However, like fighting for the playoffs uh, will be for sure a, a challenge. It def definitely going to be a tough task, but you've got some quality players uh, on on your roster, so I'm sure that if there's a chance, you guys are going to give it your best shot. Veteran, uh, w any any thoughts for uh, for Flash? Yeah, I mean, we normally think of you guys as a team that tries to draw three priority lanes, goes for neutrals, and then somewhat post 20 minutes struggles to to get those final barons to end the game. Um, this game it wasn't just a Fiora. Um, that that raised my eyebrow but also the kaiser on the bot lane and stuff these are very different kind of picks to what we normally see from you guys um are, are you changing up your identity because you feel like the other one wasn't so viable or do you actually view this as an extension of your identity and you just didn't get the matchups that you wanted or, or what's going on there 
I mean, uh, first of all, I think that today's games was a little bit of the aftermath of yesterday's games, right? Uh, I think we are yeah. changing a little bit of the of our uh, identity uh, because the next patch we will uh, have more uh, more tanks uh, on the bot lane probably. So uh, like our drafts are uh, everything about playing up pretty simple uh, team fighting mm -hmm. composition because that's what we are good at. Uh, however, yeah, like uh, we will see how we will de uh, develop, uh, like for the remaining uh, games and what uh, I will come up with the drafts, like what ideas. Sure. I, 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 I tell you what, Flash, I am very much looking forward to it. Thank you for uh, sitting down and chatting with us this, uh, with us this evening, and uh, wish you all best of luck for the remaining games you've got. Yep. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Bye bye. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Right, and now we are going to be joined by Kiba once again from Riddle. Mate, you guys are 8 and 0. Are you getting bored of killing the enemy Nexus? Not quite. It still takes some time <laughs> to do it, you know? Our game still lasts like 30 minutes, so... Yeah, mm. we gotta cut down the game time. Uh, so, I, I, I was actually gonna br bring that up. You do have some quite extended games. Do you feel like there is a specific reason uh, for that? Or is it just like the way that you guys want to play takes a little bit longer to, to end out? No. I mean, for example, this game we literally cannot lose. So we have no reason mm. to do anything. They can't really play the game. So, I mean, I think we could have ended at 22 minutes. No joke. Yeah. Because we, we like killed four of them, I think. And their mid end is open. So I'm like, let's just try and end. But, uh, yeah, I got the. I got told to calm, calm down, calm down. No ender, so we didn't end. But I think we could have. So, yeah, we just played really safe. So, so, in oh, so hold, games. hold on, who, who's telling you to calm down then? Uh, jungle. Well, a everyone kind of, but jungle. mostly jungle. Yeah, because I'm like, we can maybe. I like, end, this, you know? I like this idea that you're this little Lulu running around going, yeah, we can end the game, we can end the game. And you know, I'm so bored. Got a... <laughs> There's nothing to do, Wait, man. Do you want a Nautilus back or something? Maybe we could have a chat with oh. Coach. You could get a Nautilus. Just wait. Just wait. I've, I've seen the, the changes next patch. It's, it's done. Okay. Like, uh, <laughs> that, that then we will be fully unleashed. Like, I've had enough of this. Lulu every game. And I show up to every draft meeting saying, guys, surely they banned Lulu today, no? And they, they never banned us. <laughs> but but uh, for next week, I'm hoping um, yeah. a bit more action. I, I like being the one who starts stuff. The fights and stuff that's yeah. always pretty fun so yeah hopefully next week veteran do you know what this is reminding me of this is reminding me of the the yankos brawl meme when uh funnel was the meta and every game yankos was having to play brawl jungle um there, i, I was kind of wondering whether veteran if, you, if you've got any thoughts of the keeper about how riddle ha have been playing I mean, it's difficult because we're talking to like the the player that like had to do the least all game because he's just stuck on Lulu duty again. I was thinking at some point in that game, it's going to be really difficult to give you MVP again if they keep giving you Lulu because you have Lissandra and you have Viego rolling around, able to be like, oh, you can't engage on us because we're doing all this. Oh, we can engage on you. Oh, look, we're diving everyone, and you're just sat there in the back line throwing EW out every now and they're going to be like, oh yeah, good job, guys, great. Yeah. Oh, oh, you want to go in? <laughs> Fantastic. I will be. It's, it's, I will be excited to see you on the Nautilus and stuff, though, on actual tank champions, because you yeah. do do really good rotations to neutrals. That's basically the riddle identity at this point, and probably why Veneer could never really do anything to you because they do the same thing but way worse. Um, so it will be interesting to see you have more agency in those particular instances. But today it was like great. You played Lulu, brilliant. Yeah, and yesterday and the day before that, and um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at, at least Yumi is done now. Dude, yesterday, <laughs> when I'm playing, and, and we are talking about Yumi being nuked, right? Before the yeah. before this week of scrims and everything. And then I just see Kasing Luck and Lulu, and I'm, I'm in Yumi, and I'm like, does he know something I don't? Please pray to God that <laughs> this is not happening. Like, I, I, was, I, was just, I wasn't even scared of the pick. I was more annoyed that he's playing it. Because if one guy plays it, another guy is like, eh, well, maybe we can do that too, you know? And then everyone starts playing it, yeah. and everything happens again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but hopefully, that's not going to be the case. Um, yeah, but so far, so good, at least. Uh, I'm excited for the meta shifts. Also with ADCs, mm -hmm. because in general, I think... I don't really like this meta. I mean, I like that, for example, today, enemy bot were men. So they picked an actual, you know, bot lane. Like Kaiser and Nautilus. I mean, Kaiser and Nautilus are Mumu, all that stuff. Potato, Potato, kind of. Mm -hmm. But these kind of lanes, yeah. I like playing. 
because it just gives more to the game. I mean, it's pretty boring to watch like a Yumi Lulu lane. Like yeah, our our game yesterday lasted 45 minutes or something. It lasts it lasts so long, and I think it's purely because of draft. Uh, and yeah, I think draft is the reason a lot of games take way longer now. Especially if you just win on neutrals, as you said, veteran. Like there's no reason to actually ever do anything because uh, mm. like why should you? You can just win the game in like 10 minutes, even though. You maybe can push the pace a little bit, but if you're not that comfortable or want to make sure you 100% take the win versus teams that you don't want to drop games to, right? It's really important you stay consistent, at least for us, in these like against teams like Veneer and stuff. Um, then there's no real reason for us to look for any risks, so we just take it slow and safe. Yeah, I definitely don't oh. think you had to take any risks that game. I would say, I do think you should look at your lane setups when you're closing out there, but you guys seem to be having a really chill time just winning around every neutral. So, I agree. maybe you didn't feel the need to there, but your lane setups definitely you could have ended way earlier on some of those, yeah. so, yeah. I agree. Thank you for pointing it out. Uh, I hope next time I'll interview you here again. Also, sorry for last time, I actually DM'd you on Twitter, because I kind of feel bad, because yeah. I was like, did I make Vesman <laughs> sound like he doesn't know what he's doing? Like, that's not what I wanted to do, I just wanted to make some fun. <laughs> And you ghosted me, by the way. So I'm not DMing you again. And I was... I mean, guys, I, was, I was this I get, close. I, I was this close on following you. Messages, man. I was this okay. close on following you, dude. Oh, no. I was this close. I'd I really felt so bad. That. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, look at the, I'll look at the DM. I'll look I at the DM. I can't. I can't believe that, veteran. I cannot believe dude. that. Keep, keep <laughs> I swear to God. Keep I've done nothing wrong. I just had to be funny. Oh, no, you know? no, no, no. I, I agree with you, Keeper. I can't believe that, you, that you've had to deal with veteran not replying to one of your DMs. I, it's it's you, crazy. I, I hope that you. I hope that you've recovered sufficiently from that very traumatic event. I'm still but... broken. But, yeah. <laughs> Well, hopefully you can pick yourself up together and fix yourself before next week's games because whilst you guys have performed very well, still a lot of League of Legends to go for you. Kiba, thank you very much uh, for joining us for the interview. It's always a pleasure to chat to you, mate. Thank you and um, shout-outs to Jord. That, that's it. Bye-bye. Yep, yep. Jord. Yep. Thank you very much, <laughs> Kiba. <laughs> Lulu one tricks always really chatty. Yeah, he did, he did, he did want to talk a lot. Did want to talk a lot. I, I, well, he, I, I don't think he'd be very happy with you calling him a Lulu one trick veteran. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, before we before we close out the day, veteran, just want to get your thoughts on the matches that we've seen today. Yeah, I mean, the consistent theme has been teams. They understand that side lane play is definitely the thing to do, but very few teams understand that you want to do that with both mid and jungle, and it doesn't just have to be one or the other, right? Um, except for Riddle, right? Riddle, they, they throw all their eggs in the mid jungle basket. Mid jungle does everything. Keeper's very sad about that. Uh, and the game ends up being won. So, yeah, I think that's clearly the key area that most of the NLC needs to look at. We had some mm. one-sided games, but even in those, you could see this pattern be repeated over and over and over again, right? Um, and once they all catch up with this one aspect on the early phases of the game, I feel like Riddle could get contested, right? Because you do have those issues with closing out, those lane setups that we do see other teams do better. I feel like Nord and Ruddy understand lane setups much better in late game than Riddle do right now. Uh, but th that being said, if Riddle go back and look at that and they improve on that aspect, they technically have less to improve on than you guys do. So yeah. hopefully <laughs> they stay ahead of themselves. They don't get too cocky. They don't get too complacent um, and they maintain their lead. But there are avenues there and I hope the whole of the NLC levels up from the presence of such a team. Yeah, let's hope so. But that is going to be all from us today. Make sure that you do head on to Twitter as the MVP of the day poll is now open. We've got Nash, Fury, Kevo and Johan as your options. So please make sure that you're heading over to socials and getting your vote in. I have been middle cart. That has been a veteran. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.